I recognized that the Federal Reserve was going to be cutting back on their quantitative easing and raising interest rates, which would suck liquidity out of the market. And all of those would contribute to a big fall on Bitcoin. Yeah, so, so there were a lot of things, a lot of red flags going up. And, and in general, what you'll notice in cycles, in market cycles, is that when we have a major move like we did in Bitcoin, there's a tendency for it to go back and retest the previous cycle high. So that's where I got the 20,000 from, is that that was the 2017 high. So it made sense that if we had a collapse, we would go revisit that level. Now, in terms of the psychology of investors, what I was seeing in, in October of 2021 into November is that we saw a lot of irrational exuberance, much like the dot-com bubble in the late 90s, where these, these these penny stocks were going from a penny to three pennies to 10 cents to a dollar to five dollars and it was much the same with dogecoin shiba inu and some of these other coins out there so a lot of the similarities were going on in addition what we saw was a classic double top in bitcoin and so while everyone else was saying oh this is going to be the next rip i was just purely looking at the chart and saying you know what this to me looks like a double top with investor sentiment that's even more bullish and what we call in the in the technical world when you have more bullish sentiment but a double top it's it's basically a negative divergence it means that you know bitcoin's price should have been much much higher with so much bullishness and it wasn't it was back to those highs from march of uh, and april of 2021 so so all of these kind of factors were culminating in saying that okay we have a major pivot top here and then the question was, what type of pullback would we see? I recognized that the Federal Reserve was going to be cutting back on their quantitative easing and raising interest rates, which would suck liquidity out of the market. And all of those would contribute to a big fall on Bitcoin. I'm in agreement that we haven't reached the bottom in Bitcoin yet. It doesn't mean we're not going to get bounces. And I think sentiment is somewhat on the bearish side right now. So we may have a short term bounce coming in Bitcoin. But I don't think the bear cycle is over for a couple of reasons. Number one, you have the stock market that I don't think has bottomed. The U.S. is kind of moving towards a recession. We know there's there's generally a global recession on the horizon as well. So all of these things will take money away from people that would normally maybe invest some in Bitcoin. Um, so you have those metrics going on. In addition, past cycles, Bitcoin's always corrected 80 to 85 percent. We've only dropped about 70 to 75 percent. So you would think that there'd be a little bit more downside. And in addition, I don't think we've seen a full washout. One of the, the comparisons I drew before with the dot com era in the late 90s and early 2000s, you really saw this nasty washout. And we really haven't seen that. You haven't seen all you've seen some projects go bankrupt. We know Celsius and a few other things, but you haven't seen a real major washout yet where you've demolished and, and a lot of coins have gone to zero. And so I think you still have to see that full washout, which is actually very, very healthy for the market. It's what you want to see if you're a long term believer in Bitcoin like myself. Now, in terms of a worst case scenario, um, so my general target, my best case is 12 to 13,000. That's where I, I think the, the best case would be. My worst case, unfortunately, would be 3,500, which would put it in alignment with Amazon.com's dot com collapse. So in, in, two, in 2000, Amazon.com topped out in the dot com era and it collapsed 95 percent. And so if Bitcoin were to do that, it would put it around 3500. That would be the worst case scenario. Um, so I'm not sure if that'll happen. Though. So in October, at least uh, for us now, I'm actually slightly bullish near term. But going out four to six months, I do think we head back down. I think by mid 2023 to, to the to the second half of 2023 is when Bitcoin would bottom out per last cycles, the last few cycles. And I think you'll see that coincide with the, the global stock markets having another leg lower once they see that we are in a global recession. And then the biggest question for me is that in past recessions, in past tough market times, the central banks have always come out and printed money. With the US now having a higher inflation rate, it's very hard for them to print 
our way out of a recession. And so if the Fed can't print us out of this next recession, it means it's going to be a long drawn out recession. And that's going to be really tough for the, the, the financial markets to handle. It, that's exactly it. And I think the kicker here is, you know, past recessions for the last 20 years, whenever we've gone into a recession, the Fed has started quantitative easing, which is printing money or lowering interest rates. We're going into now a new type of recession we haven't seen in a long time where we have the high inflation. And we know that if they start lowering interest rates and printing money, then inflation is going to go even higher. So it's going to make the Fed unable to get us out of this recession, which I think keeps us in recession for a longer period than normal. Yeah. So, I mean, you basically have this scenario where the Fed has kind of been the rescuer, the one coming to the rescue of the financial markets every time we go into a tough period. And they, they just won't be able to this time, at least not as early on as the market. This is something that happened in 2008, 2009, as we know, with Lehman Brothers. And, and basically, when financial markets get extremely stressed, a lot of the derivatives um, credit markets, they start to freeze up and it makes it very hard for banks to get liquidity and kind of stay functional. And that's what you're kind of dealing with with Credit Suisse, Deutsche Bank, and potentially other banks as well. Now, right now, I don't think there's a real risk of those banks going under because I think the Federal Reserve and the central banks globally will try to help them out. But, but it is a warning sign. To me, it's a big shot across the bow where you have to start saying, all right, there's trouble here brewing and investors need to be really careful here over the next six to 12 months because it is telling us that there are problems in the system that when the Fed's not actively pumping money into the world system, you're going to have breakages. So, so in terms of fiat money, like I think it's always smart to keep some money in, at home just in case you go to the bank and the bank is closed down or there's a, you know, a, a, a grid yeah. failure or something like that where you it's can't get it. Right. Yeah, exactly. Anything like that. So so I don't have a lot, but I have kind of the emergency you know, amounts. And then I also am a big believer on having some gold and silver on hand, because, mm. again, even if you run out of, of fiat currency or it, let's say the dollar collapses or any currency collapses, gold and silver should hold their value. And you could always, you know, go buy something with a little piece of silver or something like that. So I think it's it's investing is all about figuring out the different risks and then kind of plugging those holes so you know you think about banks shutting down okay well i should have some cash on hand you think about the dollar collapsing for me in the us i need to have a little gold and silver on hand and it's all about kind of mitigating those risks i actually do i've been a big fan of gold all year long i mean the dollar has been so strong that it's kind of put pressure on gold but but i i'm a big fan of gold i think again even though the Fed is going to resist printing money for a couple years, eventually they will have to and, and they're going to be forced to because things will get so bad in the global and, and domestic economy. And so the gold price is going to be one of the key values that I think will hold your value, whether you're in you know any currency, frankly. Um, I also think that eventually Bitcoin becomes a screaming buy. Once it bottoms out, I do think it has a pivot and that will absolutely, you know, be a, a storage of safety for you as well and, and that's a great question and number one you're right i mean this is a lot of kind of sobering talk that we're doing here but i want to remind everyone that from these type of events the best opportunities arise yeah. and so you know you know people make more money by buying things in a bear market and then the rebound afterwards is tremendous and so i actually say to myself when we go through tough times i always look at it in a positive light of saying okay this is going to give me a great opportunity to buy gold buy stocks by by Bitcoin at the right levels. And so going to that, yeah, with Bitcoin, what I would recommend, and you're right, I have no idea where the actual bottom will be. All I can do is look at the charts and let them guide me. So I think when you're below 20, you basically start inching in with very little amounts and you just dollar cost average all the way down. So, so for instance, what I like to do is I, I divide the amount of money that I want to invest in Bitcoin. Let's say I have a hundred thousand dollars um, and I would divide it into five segments of $20,000. And what I would do is let's say at, at 18, put 20,000 in and then at 15, another 20, and then at that 12, another 20. And the idea is that you don't know if it's going to bottom at 15 at 10 or 12, but by just kind of throwing the money at equal installments on the way down, you're, you're going to guarantee that your average price will be relatively good for the next bull run.